Interpretation of distance time graphs. Given a graph, what information can we get out of it? In this case, let us take a distance time graph. Let us consider this following graph and use it to learn how to interpret a distance time graph. And we will do so by pondering over these questions. And I have three. First, how much time had elapsed when the body had covered 11 meters? Second, what is the distance traveled by the body in 18 seconds? And what kind of motion is the body executing? So let's start with the first question. How much time had elapsed when the body had covered 11 meters? Now, to do that, First of all, we need to identify the point where we have 11 meters. We have the scale over here. One division is one second on the x-axis, and one division is equivalent to one meter on the y-axis. And therefore, the 11th division will be representing 11 meters. So there we are. That is the 11 meter mark. From that point, we draw a line parallel to the x-axis, which cuts the graph at the point P. From the point P now, we drop a perpendicular to the x-axis. There you are. And that perpendicular to the x-axis meets the x-axis at time 22 seconds. And therefore, the time that had elapsed when the body had covered 11 meters is 22 seconds. That is the answer. So we conclude 20 sec 22 seconds had passed when the body had covered 11 meters. So that was the first question. Now let us look at the second question. What is the distance traveled by the body in 18 seconds? And again, since what is given is time, we start from the time axis. So we identify 18 seconds, and from the mark 18 on the time axis, we draw a perpendicular to the x-axis and draw it up to the point where it meets the graph. From the point Q now, we draw a line parallel to the x-axis so that it meets the y-axis this way. And now this meets the y-axis between exactly halfway between 8 and 10 and so that is the point 9. So it means when 18 seconds had passed the body had covered 9 meters. There you are. So this is how we interpret graphs. There is one more. There was one more question. So let's take the last question. What kind of motion is the body executing? To answer this question, this is what we do. Let us mark these points A, B, P, Q, and R, S. We'll take them in pairs. And we have marked these points in such a way that let me drop the perpendiculars. It will be easier for you to see. Let me drop this perpendicular from A onto the x-axis and from then from A onto the y-axis. Similarly, let us do that for B. There you are. Now if you look, between the foot of the perpendiculars for A and B, we have a time gap of 4 seconds between t equal to 4 and t equal to 8. Whereas the difference between the distances covered between these two times is 4 minus 2, which is 2 meters. Let us see what happens for the others. So for P, this is at 12 and 6 and 16 and 8. Again, here, 4 seconds time have passed and here, 
2 meter distance has been covered from 6 meters to 8 meters. Let us look at it for R and S. Here you are. And for S, this is what we have. So, again, a time of 4 seconds has elapsed. And here we are with a distance covered equal to 2 meters from 11 meters to 13 meters. So what do you notice? Every time 4 seconds have passed, whether from 4 to 8 or from 12 to 16 or from 22 to 26, 4 seconds have passed. The distance covered has always been 2 meters, 2 meters, 2 meters. So this body has been executing or let's say this body has been covering equal distances in equal intervals of time. And therefore, this body is executing uniform motion.